Well, joining me now from Salford is Nazir Afzal, who was until recently the chief crown prosecutor for the North West and brought the case against Victorina Chua. And from Stepping Hill Hospital itself, I'm joined by Anne Barnes, the chief executive of the Stockport NHS Trust. Anne Barnes, let's start with you. He got away with this for six months. Do you accept that you could have stopped him earlier? No, I don't. Um, I mean, for as example, soon if you as we realised the there hospital... was an issue. Uh, no, um, patients had already been harmed by that time. Um, I do not think that uh, when it was first identified that there were patients with low blood sugars in high numbers, that there was any question about even a criminal action. So, for example, the family of, of one of the victims says that the hospital let us down. It's hard to disagree with that, isn't it? I think Victorina Chua let the hospital down and thereby let down the care of the patients under his care, absolutely. So you think everything was done by the book as far as you were concerned? As soon as we identified that there was anything that we could not understand from a clinical point of view, we brought the police in, not because we believed there was some criminal intent, but because the police are experts in investigation. Well, Nazir Afsal, let's turn to you. Do you believe that the hospital did all they could to stop Victorina Chua in his tracks? I mean, obviously, I don't know. What I do know is that the, op the hospital was operating what it thought to be best practice at the time. Um, however, there were significant issues around access to medication, access to patients, security more generally, and, and all of those have now been upgraded. So perhaps there, there were better ways of doing things. Well, Anne Barnes, could you respond to that? Um, as was said, that was normal practice across the country in terms of security. I have to say that the only people who were accessing drugs at the time were registered nurses. What we did when we found there was an issue was we actually asked two registered nurses to go into those locked treatment areas so they could do further verification with each other. But when you realised that his qualifications were probably bogus, uh, extra checks weren't introduced until 2013. The NHS as a whole failed to respond quickly enough to this problem. Um, I have no um, proof that his uh, documentation was bogus. Um, in terms of registration of nurses, that is absolutely dealt with by the Nursing and Midwifery <coughs> Council for all hospitals in the uh, NHS. Um, they did the checks, which was normal. We then did the normal interview process. We checked his personal ID, such as a passport or birth certificate. And we also did both a, a CRB check, i.e. criminal prosecutions, uh, albeit in this country, along with uh, checking with the NMC. So we went through the full procedure in terms of recruiting Victorino. It sounds very much like you're passing the buck, though. Uh, I'm not passing the buck at all. Um, given that there are something like 700,000 staff that are nurses registered, it would not be possible for each hospital to actually do those checks themselves. That is why we rely upon a national organisation such as the Nursing and Midwifery Council. So there could be other Victorina Tours in your hospital right now with faked qualifications? Um, I've heard Jackie Smith talk about the checks that they've actually done on other nurses. Uh, I feel um, assured that they have done those checks and I do know that they've brought in further checks for recruitment of nurses as well. Again, that gives some assurance. Is it possible for somebody with criminal intent to ever do something similar again? It would be impossible to say that they couldn't. Well, Nazir Afsal, are there still significant opportunities for fraud as the police warned for government departments? Is that still a problem, do you think? Well, the NMC have completely re-engineered the processes since October 2014. That's six months after I charged Victor, uh, Mr Chuo. It's two years after his arrest. So I would imagine that the system now is extremely robust, probably the best in the world. But certainly at the time that Mr Chua um, managed to get into this country, the system relied upon photocopies, it relied upon uh, trust. And we all know from experience that if you rely upon trust, people will breach that. And additionally, the significant 
significant opportunities for fraud were so concerning that the police wrote to the Department of Health, to the Home Office, the Foreign Office. This was something that concerned us all as one as a matter that ought to be addressed at the highest levels immediately. And yet, Anne Barnes, you seem completely oblivious of, of this issue of faked qualifications. Um, until it was raised by the police as part of this investigation, it was not something that was even considered by either my organisation or any other organisation in the NHS. Not even on your radar? Not even on our radar. Do you accept that's a, a failing on your part? Again, I have to repeat that it is the Nursing and Midwifery Council who have taken on that responsibility for all NHS nurses. It's not something that we would do to then double-check a national organisation. Nazir Afsal, the investigation didn't go entirely smoothly, did it? In fact, the wrong nurse, entirely the wrong nurse, was arrested and charged and an innocent person spent six weeks in jail. Uh, she did, and uh, I dropped the case as soon as I became aware that the evidence wasn't strong enough. You have to go back to what it was like three, uh, three and a half years ago. Everybody was looking to find the culprit. This was... Um like murder on the Orient Express. There were 700, 800 suspects. It was an attempt to eliminate everybody. And we've spent the best part of four years, or the police and the prosecution service have spent the best part of four years trying to identify Mr. Chua, which they have done. Um, absolutely right that um, everything has to be done at best. We made uh, an error in the sense of uh, charging Miss Layton as we did early. But when the evidence became available, namely that she wasn't responsible, we dropped the case immediately. Nazir Afsal and Anne Barnes, thank you very much for joining me.